Thank you for tuning in to Macroview Television. And this is the Taiwan Outlook, the program that presents Taiwan to the world. And I'm your host, Wu Rei Guo. In the ongoing series on the latest technological developments in Taiwan, we will continue our focus on the state of development of the WiMAX technology. For today's program, we're delighted and honored to have Dr. Xie Qingtang, who is simultaneously the director of the WiMAX Forum Taiwan office, and also a director in the Information and Communications Research Laboratories at the Industrial Technology Research Institute here in Taiwan. Dr. Xie, welcome to the Taiwan Outlook. Hi, nice to be here. Yes. Well, it's a pleasure to have you here, Dr. Xie. And uh, as you probably know, uh, in our last edition, we have interviewed Dr. Teddy Huang, Teddy, yes. uh, who's also a specialist on the WiMAX technology. Mm -hmm. And we have learned that one of the first commercial WiMAX licenses was issued in the world in Taiwan in mm -hmm. July of 2007, which means that Taiwan is pretty advanced in the development of WiMAX technology. You're a specialist on this area, on this issue. Would you agree with such an assessment? Uh, yes, uh, Taiwan uh, has been a leader in the world you know, okay. uh, in the development of uh, WiMAX uh, technology. Mm -hmm. And also right now, uh, we'll be uh, you know, deploying the WiMAX uh, systems as yes. well as uh, applications. Okay, good. And uh, you're also, Dr. Shea, an expert on the communication technologies. And, uh, and you have worked with WiMAX Forum and with you know, WiMAX community internationally very extensively. In your experiences in the years past, what has been the biggest breakthrough in the development of WiMAX technology? I, th I think that WiMAX uh, technology uh, uses uh, you know, some basic technology uh, such as uh, you know, mm -hmm. DMA and uh, you know, okay. MIMO, multiple input, multiple output. Okay. And that enabled uh, WiMAX to uh, deliver uh, very uh, you know, high throughput okay. and also uh, make it possible for uh, Mm -hmm. the applications, uh, you know, many of the you know, advanced applications, mobile internet to be, uh, okay. uh, to, to be able. You know. Okay. So basically, WiMAX, for you know, average people like myself, that it just allows you to have better access to the internet uh, wherever you go, and you, your capacity to download materials has been you know, uh, tremendously expanded, enhanced, in terms of you know, older technologies compared to WiMAX. Is that true? Exactly. I yeah. think uh, WiMAX uh, enables uh, mobile internet. Okay. And uh, people have been asking, uh, you know, what is the catered application for 3G? Yes. And I think uh, they are still looking for it. Oh, okay. okay. So I think uh, mobile internet is uh, probably the uh, mm -hmm. you know, very important application uh, mm -hmm. for uh, for the future, you know, especially oh. uh, for WiMAX. Okay. And such that uh, you can have uh, access to internet anywhere. Okay. You know, in the world. You know. Okay. On the go, and okay. so yes. yeah, so it makes a lot more convenient. Exactly. Yeah, and Dr. Shea, we were talking before the taping started. Mm -hmm. You've been back in Taiwan from the U.S. for about eight, eight years. Eight years, yes. And you have been very active, of course, in the uh, worldwide WiMAX Forum, yeah. and you have now become the director of the WiMAX Forum Taiwan office. Can you then share with us your personal assessment? of the state of development of the WiMAX technology in Taiwan. What are the areas that Taiwan has been the leader, as you mentioned earlier, and what are the areas I th that you think that mm -hmm. Taiwan can improve upon and really be competitive with other you know, uh, competing countries? Uh, I think it's uh, you know, about four years ago, the yes. government started uh, a WiMAX blueprint okay. and uh, as a you know, basis for uh, the M-Time program. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think under the M time program, as well as some other you know, WiMAX uh, related uh, projects, yes. uh, Taiwan has uh, established uh, a WiMAX ecosystem okay. uh, from the chip development, uh, the CPE, okay. and the base station, application, okay. testing lab, as mm -hmm. well as uh, operators. Okay. Okay. So I think it's uh, especially important is the CPE. You know, Taiwan has been very uh, strong in the you know, supplying, manufacturing the CPEs uh, for Ethernet, uh, Wi-Fi, mm -hmm. um, GPS, mm -hmm. you know, handset, okay. and now WiMAX. Uh, and Taiwan will continue to lead in the, in the world in terms mm -hmm. of uh, mm -hmm. the CDB, CPE. Uh -huh. uh, in other areas, Taiwan you know, is trying to, uh, you know, uh -huh. to gain uh, more you know, uh, capability, I think, is in the system integration. Okay. That, you know, that will 
really uh, demonstrate a capability to uh, put everything together and okay. provide a total solution. Yeah. We are one of the leaders in the world. How about regionally in Asia? Who are the major competitors to Taiwan in the WiMAX technology? Well, I think it's uh, in terms of uh, providing the CBE, uh, there's really uh, no competition. Oh, okay? really? Because right. Taiwan is very efficient in manufacturing uh, uh, CBEs, of uh, not just for WiMAX, but mm -hmm. also uh, for uh, Wi-Fi as well, mm -hmm. and other you know, ICT uh, uh, technologies. Mm -hmm. So re really, there's no you know, competition right now. And okay. uh, so I believe that you know, as long as there's a deployment anywhere in the world, mm -hmm. Taiwan will be uh, benefited. Of okay. course, uh, you know, those uh, uh, you know, operators will be uh, purchasing uh, CPEs uh, you know, from Taiwan. Okay. Yeah. Well, tell us a little bit about the WiMAX Forum. You've been an active participant worldwide for many years, and uh, you're now the director of the Taiwan office. Mm -hmm. And how does that forum operate? How does that function? What kind of role does it play? Well, I think as uh, WiMAX Forum uh, uh, is a uh, Industrial-led nonprofit organization. Okay. Um, I started, uh, you know, to participate, uh, okay. attend the meetings uh, uh, from uh, 2005. Okay. So I've been, uh, you know, participating uh, continuously over four years. Uh, over yeah. four years, I participate, you know, 14, Terrific. 16, 14 uh, times. Uh, okay. okay. So I think it's uh, uh, very important from our experience uh, in promoting the Wi-Fi industry. Mm -hmm. uh, Taiwan is very strong. You know, okay. back, uh, you know, occupy 90 percent of the world market yes. in Wi-Fi. Okay. And uh, what we encountered was uh, a, a time uh, when uh, 11BA and 11G was introduced, there was a shortage in the uh, certification uh, okay. capacity. Okay. So it created uh, some problem for the Taiwanese industry. And so that's okay. why when uh, the government started, uh, you know, decided to uh, promote and devote in uh, uh, WMX uh, technology. Mm -hmm. uh, I uh, attended one foreign okay. and uh, my first job was to uh, promote uh, a certification level in Taiwan. Oh, okay. So, you know, two or three years ago, we uh, successfully uh, started you know, promoted doing that. Yeah. Uh, two labs in Taiwan oh, okay. out of uh, six in okay. the world. Okay. okay. And uh, what has been the major obstacles in terms of, you know, making WiMAX more accessible in Taiwan and also making Taiwan more internationally and regionally integrated in the development of the WiMAX technology? I think it's uh, all the technology takes time you know, to yes. develop and also it takes time for the technology to uh, stabilize. Yes, uh, uh, become to mature. commercial. Yes. yes. So I think, uh, you know, from the time uh, the Momo WiMAX standard was uh, uh, approved in mm -hmm. Taiwan in 2005. Okay. So in four years, I think uh, uh, WiMAX uh, moved a long way in terms mm -hmm. of uh, uh, you know, coming, coming up with yes. a product. You know, there are you know, more than 100 certified products uh, right now. And, mm -hmm. uh, there are also maybe uh, you know, more than 500 systems provided in uh, more than 145 uh, countries in the yes. world. Mm -hmm. Of course, there are still uh, you know, some room for improvement, mm -hmm. like you know, how to make the, uh, the product more interoperable, like you can, all device you can use in any network, yes. so that will enable roaming. Okay. Uh, all over the world, you know, yeah. that's, that will be uh, very important for the yeah, next That's step, what you know. referred to earlier about system integration. Yeah, system integration also yeah, it's important. System integration that include okay. uh, for the, all the products to work together, you know, okay. efficiently, okay. as well as uh, you can, uh, you know, the products you able from network to a network. Okay. Of course. And uh, how do you then, as the director of the WiMAX Forum Taiwan office, how do you promote the technology, both here within Taiwan and also regionally and internationally? I think within Taiwan, uh, you know, the very important thing for Taiwan is, uh, for example, the CPEs, right? Yes. For the CPEs uh, certification, you know, I think there are many uh, CPE uh, companies in Taiwan, yes. probably 20 or 30, mm -hmm. okay? And uh, the CPE need to work with the base stations. Oh, okay? Okay. And there are maybe uh, 10 or, you know, or a base station vendors uh, okay. in the world. Yes. Uh, so how to make the CPE interoperable with uh, all the base stations? Mm -hmm. that's, that's a challenge. Yes, of okay? course. So that, that's, uh, you know, the, my, uh, you know, you know, uh, among the uh, priorities uh, in working with one foreign, and okay. also to uh, reduce the certification cost. Okay. So in the last year, I have uh, you know successfully uh, you know, asked uh, the one foreign to reduce the certification cost, okay. as well as the local fee. Okay. So that will enable the Taiwanese manufacturers and okay. you know, remove some upkeep cost uh, in uh, you know getting the product certified. Yes. Yeah. And uh, how many licenses now, commercial licenses that we have within Taiwan on the WiMAX? 
Oh, the uh, Taiwan has uh, six, uh, licenses. six licenses. Yes. Yeah. yeah actually, it's called the uh, broadband wireless access license okay. in, in, in order for to be uh, you know, technology uh, neutral. Okay. okay. And suppose if I'm a just internet user who's mm -hmm. interested in the application of the WiMAX technology, and I'm asking you know asking you, Dr. Shea, your expert in the area, what would you tell me that WiMAX technology can do that's differently for me in terms of my usage of the internet? Well, I think as I mentioned earlier, you know, uh, mm -hmm. I think WiMAX enable you know mobile, mobile internet. Yes. And right now, probably a lot of families uh, mm -hmm. can access to uh, internet uh, through uh, ADSL of cable course. modem at home, yes. right? Uh -huh. But uh, you know, think about the you know people are moving, so okay. you like you know, the the services at home mm -hmm. to be available anywhere. You know, mm -hmm. while you are not in the office, you're you know outside, you know, okay. on the moving, okay. on a car, you know, on a high speed, you know, train and so on. Of course. So, why make the uh, enable you to do that? Okay? okay. Think about the you know you can do whatever you want to do at home that yeah. you can do you know okay. outside. Okay? Yeah. On but move, we yeah. learned from our last conversation with okay. Dr. Teddy Huang mm -hmm. that the six commercial licenses that we have in Taiwan, none of them is really national, so they need to have somewhat of a north-south integration or collaboration in mm -hmm. terms of you know, uh, making the technology applicable to everybody who travels all over Taiwan. Mm -hmm. Is that going to be a major challenge or is it a difficulty for the operators to overcome? I don't think that's a big issue, no? but okay. I think of course the, when the license was uh, issued, it was designed that way to have uh, three in the north and yes. three in the south. Yes. So you, have, you want to have uh, you know, more licenses uh, to give uh, you know, those operators, especially mm -hmm. new operators, you know, yes. few operators. A chance to uh, you know to to deploy and to uh, uh, you know provide service. Yes, that's why uh, government uh, you know, uh -huh. came up with uh, six licenses. You know. Okay. And then of course uh, uh, when you are when you are in the north operator, you want to uh, be aligned with the uh, operator yeah. in the yeah, south. south. Yes. So you to make you know, it national. Yeah, make national. So or through roaming or some kind of agreement. Okay. And I don't think that's a problem. And yeah. of course, the eventually maybe uh, some of them decide to merge. You know. Yes. And, of and, course, you know, yeah, make it you know yes. a lot more accessible. Exactly. Yes. yes. I want to thank Dr. Shea for a very comprehensive overview of the WiMAX technology here in Taiwan and also internationally. And we're going to take a short break. We'll be right back to the Taiwan Outlook and we'll continue this conversation with Dr. Shea Qingtang. I'll see you in three minutes.